Hi everyone, my name is Juno. I have a health science background and I'm the author of the book Tooth and Empathy, How to Find Your Soulmate. And I'll put a link to the book below. This video is an MBTI relationship analysis of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's relationship. I think most people have heard that both of these people got married in 2018. I mean, it was well, you know, publicized, and that they've been married for four years now. They have two young children, a little boy and also a little girl. So uh, I think that it's a good time to sort of see um, how their relationship uh, has evolved and probably will be evolving. So uh, the first thing that it's important to know when it comes to personality types is to type both individuals. So I have typed Mingle Markle as an ESFP because uh, she is interested in being an entertainer. She was an actress uh, before marrying, obviously, Press Harry. Uh, she also has uh, you know, an interest in business. So uh, she's that person who's really good in terms of marketing, in terms of being able to sell herself. And also, she's someone who is a feminine energy. So she's someone who comes across as empathetic. Uh, she's someone who seems warm. And uh, also, the way she dresses was so something very, very feminine about her. Uh, the other aspect is that she's someone who's comfortable in the limelight. So that's why uh, I would say that she's probably an extrovert and that's why she, I would say that she's an ESFP. When it comes to Harry, Harry, uh, I type him as an ESTP because he's someone who is very much about uh, freedom and movement. So she's someone that who doesn't have a long attention span. That's why even in school she has this hard time like focusing. So it's not that it's, it's a lack of intelligence, but it's how and when someone has a particular brain type, they have a certain strength and weaknesses. Uh, so he's also someone who comes as across as a masculine energy. So. Uh, um, he's someone who seems like rather logical when he talks. He likes to, uh, you know, get to the points. He's concise. And also, he's someone who seems uh, comfortable uh, being in limelight. Uh, so he probably gets energized by being around people. Yeah. Harry, uh, being an ESTP, probably uh, is very good in situations where uh, there's danger or there's a need to think quickly and really it's about survival in the moment. Both Meghan Markle and Prince Harry Harry are sensor perceivers, therefore these are people who are about the present moment, so they are about uh, action in the present. And if you look at their function stack, they both have extroverted sensing as its first function. But obviously, uh, Meghan Markle being a feminine energy and Prince Harry being a mask energy means that they probably approach relationships differently. So Meghan Markle probably has more uh, in, in, like insight into her own feelings compared to Harry. So even Harry, when it's his mother died, he's the type to probably want to distract himself more uh, because he, you know, he's not really comfortable understanding his emotions or other people's emotions as well because he, he it's difficult to use logic sometimes when it comes to very emotionally charged situations. So the other aspect is that when you look at their relationship is that uh, Prince Harry very much wanted to settle down. And it's not because so much that um, it's in, this, in nature, but being part of a royal family, um, these are individuals who uh, often have to uh, get married in their 20s at the most early 30s because it is expected. So uh, seeing that his brother, older brother, obviously uh, Prince uh, William already got you know married and he had children, uh, probably Prince Harry felt the pressure to do so. The challenge with uh, Prince Harry when he wanted to get married is that he's part of the core roles. You know, you obviously the Queen Elizabeth the second then you have Prince Charles, uh, Princess Diana, and they're the, the children of people who are really well known. So it, it's not easy for him to find someone who will fit well with the royal family. Uh, one of the reasons is that obviously they want someone probably uh, who is you know well off you know, financially, but also he has to think about this person you know having like a a, a proper background. Uh, he has to think about does this person comfortable with all the attention they will be getting. Because when you think about it, let's look at the case of Mingo Markle and even uh, uh, Kate Middleton, is that you are literally in a, 
you know, golden cage. And you cannot sort of just go out and, uh, let's say, uh, go for a walk. You always have a bodyguard with you. you. You always are concerned about your own safety, the safety of your children being, you know, scrutinized. And really, to be part of your family, a woman has to give up, you know, her career. She has to give up pretty much everything to basically be... Uh, uh, his wife. So I think that it's not an easy task to find someone that not only obviously would fit well with the royal family and all the protocol and so forth, but they would feel that they, they, they mesh well in terms of uh, their uh, goals and, and their likes, dislikes, if they're you know physically attracted to each other. So there are so many uh, sort of facets to it. That if That's we look at the example of his father, uh, Prince Charles, and his mother, Princess Diana, is a classic case of uh, having to you know, the pressure of marrying someone who fits well with the, the role protocol and everything else. And that's why he ended up marrying Princess Diana, who was, you know, not probably suited, although he was in love with another woman who was Camilla Parker Bowles. So I think that for uh, Prince Harry, uh, you know, meeting Meghan Markle was like such a sense of relief because the fact that finally he'll be able to uh, find sort of a compromise. And you have to think about the fact that Prince Harry... He being an ESTP, he's the exact opposite of what the royal family stands for. So uh, to find someone who he finds exciting, um, theme of their lives both is uh, freedom of movement, someone who uh, is uh, rather charismatic, uh, someone who he's physically attracted to, So, and in terms of the age as well, so they're rather close in age. All this to say is that um, I think that when... Uh, Prince Harry met Meghan Markle, it was a great relief for him. Uh, on the other hand, I would say that Meghan Markle really wanted to get married and have children. And obviously, when she crossed paths with Prince Harry, it was like the right opportunity to actually, uh, you know, fulfill that uh, desire. Uh, but I'm kind of surprised that she was uh, you know, unaware of the amount of pressure that she would be under. Because obviously, when you are part of the royal family, um, you are a public figure and you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, analyzed, scrutinized. So the fact that she was surprised that uh, she would have this all this negativity, uh, I think that's kind of a bit odd. Uh, the other aspect is that being both sense of perceivers, they tend to be impatient. So I'm not surprised that from the moment they met until they got engaged and got married, it's a period of only maybe two years. And that is pretty fast. That's if you compare uh, Prince William and Kid Milton's sort of like uh, relationships of speed. And obviously, Obviously, it has to do with the fact that not only they're sent both sense of perceivers, but uh, both have extroverted sensing as their first function has to do with action in the moment. So that's why they went fast. And also the fact that, you know, they don't have that much time to waste being both in their 30s. Uh, the other aspect also, I feel that um, uh, if you look at the body language between Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, um, it seems that Meghan Markle, maybe because she's a bit older and, you know, she had more life experience and, you know, she was, a, let's say, well-established financially, so she had to sort of work her way to becoming like an independent woman, it seems that she is the one more in charge in that relationship. And I think a part of the reason is that probably most people view Prince William as being more of the responsible role compared to Prince Harry. So in a sense, he's not viewed as, let's say, as, let's say, uh, serious or, or well-grounded, and that may have affected his self-confidence. Another point is that Prince William went on to have a user degree, whereas Prince Harry, uh, not being really able to focus in school, went to the army. Now, although like, I think that he did really well in the army, but I think that may have affected him. And also the as other aspect is that Meghan Markle is also university educated. So for these reasons, I would say that Meghan Markle uh, in his life is helping him boost his self-confidence. And also, when you think about it, is that Meghan Markle had the time to you know, build her own uh, sort of so self-confidence because she went on, yes, she finished university, she also became financially independent, she built her own business. So she's someone who's very independent. So compared to Prince Harry, that really when you think about it is that what really helped him is the fact that he was a role. So he didn't have much time to really maybe prove to himself that he could stand on his own. So uh, I think that if you look at the dynamic 
most likely uh, Meghan Markle has more of a say in you know, important matters in their relationship. Now, the fact that they move from uh, England all the way to the States, that may be a challenging sort of like situation for them because when you think about it is that, um, yes, uh, Meghan Markle left uh, the United States to go to uh, the England to marry Prince Harry. They, she stayed there for a while, but she didn't have sort of a, a, a long history. Like when you think about the role is like it's an institution it's it's really what defines um prince harry so i think it's going to be difficult maybe long term for him to be away from his family and all that he is known that as soon as Meghan markle moved back to the state she was able to uh, re-enter the entertainment business so she feels really at home here and you know obviously she ha she's a mother she's a wife but also she's able to pursue her like whatever you know she's passionate about well one of the main issues probably with Prince Harry is that he left everything he has known behind to come to the state. So he has to find a career, an occupation that is in line with what he's passionate about. So that's going to be a challenge. And obviously, uh, him being a mask energy versus feminine energy, um, you know, mask energy is not as much in touch with their feelings and, and understanding themselves and others. And feminine energy is more uh, equipped you know, for that. So in other words, that can be a challenge. And when it comes to sense of perceivers, uh, the theme of their lives is uh, freedom and movement. So we'll see how they're able to hold it together long term facing these challenges. So um, for all these, I would say that, uh, you know, we'll see how it works out uh, in the sense that uh, are they going to be able to maintain uh, a happy relationship uh, being either having to, you know, one have to leave everything behind to be with the other. Uh, the fact that uh, obviously they, they're still public scrutiny, uh, everything they, they, they say or do is reported practically. And obviously I, I would say that they are still promoting themselves. So, I mean, we can say that compared to, let's say, Kate Milton and Prince William, who are probably sort of more low-key, uh, I would say that uh, Meghan Markle and uh, her in particular uh, and Prince Harry are not really shying away from publicity. So that may uh, sort of put extra strain on their relationship. And obviously the fact that, you know, they cannot just walk down the street. There's always a bodyguard with them. So it's not a sort of a natural sort of like or organic type of way of starting a new life as a young couple. So um, uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with uh, this MBTI relationship analysis of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's relationship by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything new, please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and we will talk soon.